Okay, we are recording. This is the first show. This is the podcast called Art Edwards Appears Large. When I was going to do a podcast, it was very natural for me to decide who to have on that podcast because it has to start with these two gentlemen. On your on my left is Brett Hartley. On my right is Kevin Leahy, and these are the two guys who have been the backbone of my musical life for 15 years. Um, they've played on all three of my records, especially the new record, which is called Branches Breaking from the Weight, which we just finished and has been out for like two weeks. Um, you might be hearing this later than two weeks. It was actually in May. Whenever you're hearing this, don't be confused. It's out there. You can find it. And so I wanted to, we made this record. I'm in Portland, Oregon the whole time. Brett and Kevin are in Atlanta, Georgia. So it's a very much a 21st century type record that we've made. Um, and because of that, I actually know very little <laughs> about what happened <laughs> during the making of the record, you know, <laughs> uh, you know, it, it comes to me and I do my thing and I send it out and we talk and, you know, it's an email, but, you know, let's face it, we're, we're, we're three men of a certain age and, uh, you know, we all have about five or six other things that are more important than making a record all the time. So, um, you know, sometimes it's done kind of quickly and the communication is very quick. So. I wanted to take this opportunity to find out how my record was made and I'm going to record it so that everybody can hear it. And we don't, these guys don't have to say it again. So anyway, um, to start, I'd like to start by just letting these guys introduce themselves. Maybe you might or might not be familiar with them. So, um, Kevin, give us a rundown of, of who you are and what brought you to this point today to be on this record. Sure. Sure. Well, I'm Kevin Leahy. I am, uh, yes, indeed, of a certain age, say in the late 40s, just for a round number. Um, yeah, and I've been um, sort of a journeyman drummer, freelance, side player, drummer for a very long time, probably since uh, third grade. But um, uh, I endearingly call it the Drummer Exchange Program, as I've been fortunate to have uh, worked with a lot of great singers, songwriters, guitarists, bands, orchestras, you name it. And uh, it led me from New York, where I grew up, to uh, Indiana, um, where I went to college, to Atlanta, where I've sort of had my home um, for the last 25 years. And um, yeah, have no, fortunate to have known Brett almost as long as I've been here in Atlanta. And through Brett, uh, got to know art and this music. And um, it uh, just continues to amaze me that I'm able to keep it going. So... Very good. And it's if you were story. really gonna, if you were gonna impress the heck out of us with some people you played, who would you say? You know, the, gonna... uh, there's a few highlights. Yes, in the in the 25 years um, <laughs> since I left Bloomington, Indiana, to uh, make it big here in Atlanta. But um, yeah, I was fortunate to work with Sean Mullins on his uh, Soul's Core album, which uh, produced the hit "Rockabye" that um, took me around the world. At, 23, 24 years old. Um, not sure if that was a great idea, but uh, it was a blast. And, um, you know, that opened up some opportunities too. Uh, years later with the Bodines for a couple of years, played on the Resolution album, um, and then working under uh, Zach Brown's uh, Southern Ground umbrella with a few of the artists that he had on his label and touring with him for uh, about a year. And um, other artists along the way, you know, it's interesting. Those are the ones that sort of broke through to more um, commercial success, but, you know, it, it, there, there's tons of others of uh, artists I've gotten to work with that uh, equally is uh, impress, impressive to me, at least, the moments we were able to create stuff and 
um, seeing them still do it nowadays is pretty impressive as well. Right on. Well, that's an impressive list. Um, Mr. Hartley, I've, I've, I've known Kevin for 15 years. I've known Brett for 115 years. Um, <laughs> we, Brett and I went to high school together, but I want to let yeah. him talk about himself and tell you the highlights of, of, of what brought him <laughs> to where he is today on this podcast. Wow. Yeah. We went to high school together and then we spent a year or you, you graduated before I did and you went to the local community college and then I graduated the year after and went to the local community college and we started playing in bands together, which I still for the life of me cannot remember how that happened, but we wound up you needed a guitar player and something and somehow we found each other and then you left for tempe and i'm sure all of you the people watching this know what happened to you in tempe uh i finished the community college with an associate's degree in music theory and composition and then went to full sail and got an engineering associates there and met some dudes who lived in atlanta and Moved home for a little while, back to Moline, Illinois, and then uh, didn't didn't dig the north anymore. <laughs> didn't want to do the cold. Uh, I did one more winter up there and was like, forget this. And moved to Atlanta in 93 and just trudged it out with a couple of punk bands um, at the clubs here. And then realized that I was probably going to have to do a better job of taking it seriously. And, uh, if I was going to make something of myself and started to play hired gun. And that was late nineties, 2000 when I met Kevin and Kevin and I, I think the first tour Kevin and I did together was the Billy Pilgrim. Yeah. Um, that's right. uh, and then have toured with other people together and just done sessions and you know that's the incestuous music community here in atlanta we wound up on and recommended each other for crazy things ted ted russell camp was another one yeah. um we did some shows with him from shooter jennings band and that was a, a lot of fun as a trio yeah. <laughs> no yeah. less that was a, that was a lot of fun um but i you know i've done i've done a lot of stuff uh written songs for Nashville people and uh, played with some folks on Zach Brown's label when that was a thing. And um, uh, Elliot Bronson's probably the biggest name I'm working with now. Um, but a lot of people, a lot of, I, I listed it all out and sent it to a potential client the other day and was just like, holy crap, that's a lot of, <laughs> that's a lot of records. And those are the only ones I can remember. <laughs> yeah. So a lot of little stuff you've never heard of and some big stuff that, uh, I is, is, uh, it is what it is. Sure. Okay. Well, you Google it. <laughs> <laughs> it's all out there. They don't, mm -hmm. they don't, you mentioned Brett, you mentioned trios. And trio is something that I associate with you quite a bit. Playing it, playing as a threesome is something yeah. Brett and I did in a, a band lot. called the Varietals when we were 19, 20, 18, 19. Yeah. The, 18, the, 19. The best replacements wannabe band in yeah. the history of Moline, Booster Illinois. Yeah. yeah. So so we love that format. And we specifically brought that ethos to this project. Um, Brett's the producer. He kind of directs all of this, but... I can't help but notice, you know, it's always kind of starts with the trio. And I think in an ideal world, we sort of fantasize a bit that it could always just be a trio um, in terms of uh, the, the the approach to the music and sort of the, it's an it's an ethos with the trio. You know, you ideally you want it to be just these three guys playing in a room and uh, everything is taken care of. And you, when you play it back and you play the tracks, you're like well, what, you know, it's done. And I would probably say there's probably a song or two on each album that, that tr comes really close to emulating that, a very Minutemen kind of approach, you know. But, yeah. you know, we've all heard Beatles Beatles records and, you know, it, it, it's it's sort of gone from there. Um, uh, 
in terms of uh, the songwriting of this one, um, we made a decision early on to have everybody be songwriters on this record. I, I, I call this record the anti-Wilco record, where Wilco is one guy who hires a, a bunch of guys. Fantastic band. I have all their records. Hires a bunch of guys, and they call it a band. We're guys who are doing everything we can to be a band, but we're calling it Art Edwards. Um, yeah. Uh, because I I, 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 I I leveraged it for everything that I could. No, I'm just kidding. It just, it, it's, e- <laughs> it's easier at this point than to come up with, let's come up with a new name and try to get other 50 year olds into the idea. Hey, there's yeah. this new band out, you know, yeah. heck with that. So and we talked about it. We talked about it. It wasn't, you know, it wasn't a, uh, it wasn't a, a law laid down from, from one of us. We, we, we made that decision together. Yeah. So it, you know, and that, you know, I've, what was what was great was um, my my trouble with songwriting was music, and so I don't remember where how it started, but at some point Brett or Kevin or somebody suggested that you guys would write the music. Do you remember what, how that happened? Well, uh, I I had ideas on my iPhone for and and still you know the voice memo thing on the iPhone is a beautiful uh, every you know everybody knows what it is, but. I mean, it. <laughs> those are ideas. <laughs> and uh, I had some, I was like, I, ha- I had a bunch that were like, this is really good riff. This is just a really good punk riff. And, 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 and I think, when, well, when the pandemic started, I had gotten that box there called the Ox that plugs into the Marshall there. And was it, it allowed me to work at home and not wake up the kids uh, or the wife and to keep happiness on the home front. And, and I started to lay stuff down in, in logic and, and it was like, Oh wow, this is too good. And, and then I think I started, I think I reached out to you art and was like, what do you think about this? Me and Kevin going down to his space, which he's sitting at now. And, I'll take my ox and my marshal and we'll lay these hunks down of uh, these ideas and we'll send them to you. But that means you got to edit and go like this and, and you write over them. And we thought, Oh, you know, it's worth a try. So uh, early in the pandemic, it was very quiet down in Kevin's space and very easy yeah. to record. And um, we just used what we had and we did it. And it, it worked the first round of, ideas and we just kept going is what i remember yeah i remember that as well um because you're right it was right sort of the onset of the pandemic everyone's both trying to figure out what's going on and still have some creative juices flowing and not knowing where to direct them and uh fortunately through email people have found each other and that's where brett and i well brett you came up with some of these ideas and coincidentally I, this room i have it's a small rehearsal space in a, a building in midtown atlanta that i've had for 15 years and it first started off i shared it with another drummer and it was just storage space because we were both touring a lot and you know they throw the drums in and, and disappear and then it became a rehearsal space for a while um but early on in the pandemic i realized i had all this stuff that i don't have, have in the house some old recording equipment and pa equipment i I just keep in here and I just hadn't connected it together. So it had dawned on me, maybe I should start piecing some of this stuff together. And I have a, um, it was at the time state of the art in 2000, maybe 2001, the digi double uh, one, a Mac G four uh, with a zip drive, I think That's running was, o- yeah. OS 8.1 that I had never connected to the internet, so I wasn't worried about any uh, malware with it. But it, um, you know, some microphones, drum kit, um, this one right here, and um, just for fun, wanted to see if I could just go from beginning to end, playing something to tracking it and um, seeing what it sounded like. Um, Because I just hadn't put the time into that in uh, the last couple of years. It just sort of sat very close to each other but not connected and so this project gave me just more incentive to to uh to make it work and uh you know once it worked the first day i'm like all right we got to keep this going and uh (laughs) you know started to clean up the mess i made in here and it uh you know i guess it was each 
month or two, a few new ideas would come up and then the form started coming together. And that was exciting for me to hear Brett's ideas and then to come up with parts, but then to record them here, um, we would take a USB drive connected to my Mac G4 hit start and then have to talk for an hour because it would take that long to transfer <laughs> off this uh who knows what is it a maybe a 20 year old computer 12 megabyte i don't know it, yeah. it it did not doesn't have the processing <laughs> speed that um my cell phone has nowadays so um but it, it worked and um you know it's uh it was exciting to see that we could we could build something with it and then uh, of course <laughs> Brett was able to clean it up and make it sound a little better um, with his equipment but um, it felt exciting to get it kind of started here um, sonically at least so sure and it was exciting because I would get them and I'd be like you know like I think the first batch there were maybe three different sessions of 10 songs maybe 11 songs um, I think we did three at a time okay yeah maybe maybe two at a time at some points but it was either that way just waiting for the computer to catch up with it's like can't do any more than three so yeah well, <laughs> right. it was just it's schedules you know it was nighttime yeah. it was it was after after work and yeah after getting kids down or talking yeah. wives into letting us out of the house and <laughs> so yeah and then and then yeah he, he kevin yeah it was, it was as many as kevin could do in an evening and it was usually yeah. just two or three i didn't we weren't in a huge hurry. We didn't know if it was going to work. Yeah, that was the the the, the joy of it that turned into part of the uh, um, sort of the I guess you could say what, what helps keep it going is the fact that there we didn't have any expectations. There was never, uh, hey, come on, man, let's get this done. Or uh, are you sure you can't make it work Friday? It was always like, well, <laughs> we'll let it take its course. And by doing right. so, it made it enjoyable and. Yeah, it took two years, but um, there was never a moment where I was like, "Oh man, I can't, I can't do this anymore," or "This isn't worth my time." It was really each moment was was a cool, pure, creative moment, and um, you know, even during the recording, it was like, "Oh, let's try this, let's try that," and it was never like, "All right, well, I'll do this one more take, but I got to cut it from here." Yeah, you know, it was always you know just going for it, and then we'd feel it and be like, "All right, that that's it, let's." meet up again in a month <laughs> yeah i think the key is 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 keeping that dollar figure dollar figure low as in right this low for as long yeah. as possible we, we we each have you know 30 years of equipment sitting around and we all have <laughs> you know the internet yeah. so it, with that and with you know we're, we're we're guys of a certain vintage nobody's expecting a record from us anytime soon um we'll be lucky <laughs> if we can crawl our way to one final one before you know or whatever um, and it wasn't yeah. like that at all. It was all pretty easy. It was the fun thing as I was getting the music was the fun thing I got to do every month. Um, yeah. But I have to I have to say when I first got the music, like the first time I was like, you know, I've been a guy who's who's been playing at most, you know, acoustic guitar in my office for a decade. And I got the music and this was like some of the songs were as harder, like hard rock, eight, like from the yeah. REM ACDC continuum, they were like more toward the ACDC than the REM. And here I am, you know, guy in my fifties in my office, you know, it's like, okay, I guess I'm a rock singer now. Um, <laughs> that, that should be interesting, you know? And it was, a, it was a little intimidating so much so that the first song I went for was, was the music for Kingdom Come, which was yeah. virtually done in terms of an A, B and C part. Um, yeah. And I cut I cut it together a, a little bit, but the, the the three parts were already there, and it was totally REM, Counting Crows. You know, it was a very safe one to start with. So I had I had a question on a podcast that I was on last week where the guy asked, "Okay, on Kingdom Come, is Brett playing a Vibrolux?" No, no. Do you own a Vibrolux? No. <laughs> it's all Marshall. It's all Marshall. <laughs> it's all Marshall. All right, there you go, Brent Marshall. <laughs> And I, and I knew uh, that was that was a big a deal. Caster, but yeah, it's all it's. Uh, uh, there, there's a couple. I think um, about my speed is not the Marshall. Hmm. That that is that's the one I know for sure is not the Marshall. But most of the album is the Marshall and some some configuration of of guitar. Right. Well, I knew Brett got a Marshall from the from the music that. That I was getting because it was definitely like heading toward the cult 
it was heading toward, you know, up that, you know, four, four. It's, hard been, it, it's been on all your records. The new piece is, is the ox. Oh, which okay. allowed me to, to manipulate the marshal easier and not uh, annoy the family and or neighbors. I see. It allowed me to really crank it and not hurt anybody. And that, that was, that was certainly a change. Um, but I've had that Marshall forever that, um, I've had it since 2004, at least it used to belong to Ricky Keller at the Southern living at its finest studios yeah. who made all the records with, uh, Colonel Bruce and Jimmy Herring's played through it. I know for sure, um, that he used it. And Jeff Bacos has been his hands of the only he's he's been in it for me in the last 15 years. So. Um, but, yeah, the way you cut Kingdom Come together. That was the cool other cool part about this project is that I. I had an idea and, and my vision of what I thought a song should be in Kingdom Come is certainly as long as we're going down this road, the biggest one where when you edited it back and you sang over it, I was just like, how is he doing that? <laughs> how is he making that work? That is not at all how I envisioned this being, but it was absolutely fabulous. And, and within a couple of listens, it was like, this is the song. This is the way it should be. Right. And all of them were like, all of them were like that to some degree or another uh, for me. But I, I tried to quell that, if we had been in the same room, I'd have gone, oh, that's that's the chorus and this is the verse. And you went, no, nah, like that. <laughs> and it worked beautifully. So uh, and and that was the spirit of the project. So why why mess with it? You know, it is a complete trip the way that it worked that way that that yeah. because there, there's a lot of that. You get the first thing and it's not what you heard in your head. Yeah. And and yeah. so there's a, there's there are moments that there's like moments of several minutes maybe even a half a day where you have to sit back and just completely let go and trust the expertise of the yeah. people who are giving you the stuff. Right. Um, and it's, that's a pretty amazing thing to, cause we're all working on the internet. We're all very much in our heads, even while we're doing this. And, you know, so you're not in a room and, 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 and it, it really shaped the music in, a, in an interesting way, in a way that I found yeah. at first heart, you know, like, uh oh, what's what's going on? I didn't see this coming. And and then by the end, halfway through the day, you know, a first email at six a.m. would be like the exact wrong thing to say. But an email in the afternoon, after you've heard it three times, was like, wow, I thank you, <laughs> you know, thanks for <laughs> thanks for the the beat or thanks for the you know whatever. So yeah, I think we each kind of just trusted everyone's time with it, and whenever there was a communication after something was transferred it was like okay like there was never a no no i really i really think this is the way yeah. it has to be <laughs> it was always kind of like oh yeah I, almost like fresh ears each time we heard someone <laughs> respond yeah. to an email whether it's a day or a week apart or a month apart um and that was the cool thing for me and again i think it sort of ties into that lack of of, of, of timeline or budget or expectation we just sort of had moments where we got into it and then traded it and at least I didn't give too much direction. Maybe you guys gave each other a little bit more direction than I did, but um, we each kind of just passed the football and, and ran down the field a bit and passed it back. And, you know, the just a little razzle dazzle made it happen. Yeah. There's a thing called Ex Exquisite Corpse where five yeah. writers sit, you know, it, it was kind of like that yeah. where it would pass, pass it on. It on. Right, right. Right. And in the end, it was a monster and, you know, yeah. in, in, the, in the best possible way. Um, yeah. But um, so, so we mentioned Kingdom Come. So I, I did Kingdom Come, and then I, I, the second one was Play the Hits, and it was a rock song. It was a for sure, like I thought Green Day ish kind of rock song. And I was like, okay, I've got to, I got to find that guy somewhere, you know. Um, and it, it usually was triggered by a vocal, a, a, a lyric. Um, and anytime I, I, I'm triggered by a lyric, it's always, it's almost always a lyric that's funny to me. The end product might not sound funny at all, but to me, when I when I think it, it's always funny. Um, yeah. And uh, so, you know, another fine econo line idea 
I, I like I like the Econo line idea. Econo line summons for me Mike Watt and the Minutemen, which is yeah. where where this you know this all starts. It always comes back to that. Um, and in Econo line ideas, where you're you know you're you're throwing down your time and your money to do something independent, you're going to go sell it out of, out of your Econo line van, and you're going to you know conquer the world, which is something I will always and forever have some romance for. So. Yeah. Um, so, you know, that, and that kind of set me off in, in that direction. Um, uh, if, uh, a memorable thing from rough cuts, anything that jumps out at your, from either your heads that you were, as we were making it, that really surprised you, you talk, we, we, we all talked a lot about, you know, just trading it off. Was there anything that jumps out at you that, that you can remember that you felt like, oh, wow, this is taking a really cool turn or otherwise. I can't remember when it started happening, but when I started hearing a, a a unique mood in each song that wasn't there in the beginning, it was more like, wow, I'm actually recording drums in this room and it, it's lining up and, you know, just the engineering side was, was worked out and then it became, all right, well, this is sort of becoming a song. And then of course, you know, adding a few other layers to it for some of the tracks, but, um, that's what I love now when I listen to the record is listening to it, the whole sequence. And it has those dips and valleys that I loved listening to albums. You know, it's how I heard music my whole life was a cassette or a CD or an album top to bottom. And to hear this now and how you, know, you start anticipating that next song or you start getting excited about, you know, just the, the moods that you go through and to think that, um, that we were able to do that with no direction. It was really just the, the trust that our, our decisions at each step along the way would produce something that that would emerge from. And uh, that's, uh, that's the fun thing for me to still hear, um, you know, as I listen to it in different settings, either in my car, you know, out for a walk or um, wherever it may be. And to sort of hear those, those nuances and those moods kind of come through um, in each listen. And, I don't know where they began, to be honest, but it uh, you know, the the ingredients were in there, uh, the seed or the soil or whatnot. But uh, to see it actually happen, you know, it's pretty pretty incredible. Mister Hartley, you have thoughts? Uh, I I I realized early on and from experience to not hang on to too much from the rough cuts once. Once Kevin and I lay down something and sent it to you, like every step of the process, once I got something that was new, I didn't go back and go, what am I missing from the rough cuts? Cause I didn't want to, it didn't matter at that point, whatever was, whatever had been birthed at that moment was what we were dealing with. And I didn't see the point in missing something from before. I didn't want to have that ego in that in this in this project, and and it's after years and years of making records, it's probably not healthy to have it, <laughs> uh, unless there's an issue. Uh, but I never felt like there was an issue with this. It was always the biggest issue was trying to keep things like we had talked about at the beginning is trying to keep things raw and and the trio format and not trying to. I was very leery of, of adding too much stuff at home because I was working at home. Um, and, and I wanted to keep it three dudes in a garage, you know, yeah. like, like the old days. Uh, so I didn't, I didn't go back and, and, and listen, not that I can recall. And if I did early on, I realized it was a mistake and I, I didn't do it anymore. Hmm. Uh, it didn't matter we were we were trying to go forward we weren't trying to go back so uh yeah. and, and that, there's, that was my thought process <clears throat> excuse me there's just not even time you know what i mean yeah. it's just like, it's <laughs> yeah. already to the next thing so what at the end of the day you're gonna call brett and go oh yeah just go ahead and erase all that yeah and i've got an idea for a horn section so just we need to save space for that and i'll send you something and you know it's 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 stupid you know I, I know anything that if, if it like was abrupt and I didn't quite see it coming, I, I knew in three hours it would be fine, you know? Yeah. And so there's yeah. sort of a, like an, an emotional intelligence you're developing for the project as you go, you know? Trust. Absolutely. Right. Yeah. Exactly. Um, you don't have to control it. It's there's, 
three competent people who can who can handle it you know so um I, and after when, 30 years of making records it's not the last record you're going to make either right right that's for the, if <laughs> we'll you want to do it next time if you want to do it differently that's for the next record you know <laughs> exactly um and speaking of going from the trio and when it gets bigger and when george martin showed up and said oh we've got to we've got to do something with this probably like if you had to point to things on the record those are my favorite parts and I'll just start by saying uh, marimba and let uh, let, uh, let Kevin uh, tell us about the marimba. Yeah, that was just a, um, just this thing right over here, I guess. Um, we were sitting around after tracking something and, and listening to, um, um, you know, listening the world to is where enough. the, yeah, the world, well, listening to the world is enough, right? And uh, it's that really cool sort of rhythmic breakdown section and i think we tried something first i can't remember what it was but i was like no 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 it needs to be be, it needs to be aggressive but open and i just looked over i'm like this thing (laughs) that's why you know it's one of those moments like all right this is why i've had this room for 15 years it's for this very moment (laughs) you know be put on the spot (laughs) and just point to the thing i need and uh i remember at first it was ringing too much so we put up um uh a towel Blanket over it and I, towel, yeah. Yeah, yeah sort of played just sort of those octaves on it and i love that it's you can't really tell it's a marimba um it's you know to me it's it's the just those extra unique ingredients that you hear on the you know replacements or um you know who's who do albums or something where it's just kind of like it kind of comes and goes it's in the mix and sure you can focus on it and draw attention to it but it also fits on its own it doesn't stand out so much um, but that was a fun one to add. And yeah, I'm glad we weren't like, Oh, we got to put this on every track. I mean, it really fits well for that tune. Um, and you just leave it, you know, just sort of say, all right, that, that's, that worked. And it's, it's go get lunch. You know, like it's not really, uh, uh <laughs> before you start trying to ruin it, um, you know, adding it to every tune, uh, just having it stand out on that one was, a was a pretty cool moment. And I love hearing it right off the top of the album because it, uh, you're right. It is. This is a meteor album that I've done in a while, and uh, I like the fact that we kind of start off with that garage sound from the top, and um, you know, it, it, it sort of sets the, the good, strong tone from the beginning. Yeah, it's it's that we were talking about the first song. It's the world is enough, and try to find the marimba on it. You will find it now that we've said it. It's kind of one of those things where <laughs> you you buy a certain brand of car and you've never considered that brand of car ever in your life. And then you drive right, once and everywhere. you see 15 of those cars. <laughs> right, right, right. Now, you, you can't not hear, you can't not, you can't not see the elephant. You know what I mean? Once you stay <laughs> right. you know, the elephant is in the room now. So um, yeah, yeah. you'll, you'll hear it. Um, and uh, speaking of weird uh, and thing that was added later, um, I can't help but remember, think about alpha alpha Centauri, which is on the second side. And there's, a thing going on in the solo section that started as a as a very trio-y Minutemen thing, and then and then then things get creepy. Can you tell us about that, Brett? <laughs> well, I have um, my wife's childhood piano is down in my studio, and it's it's um, it's between a quarter and a half a step low. Uh, in pitch, the whole thing is kind of, it, it's still in tune with itself for the most part, but uh, it, it has a nice, that kind of out of tape, that beetle thing of, of manipulating tape, kind of, and I had to learn, and, and I, I I didn't want to, I didn't want to add another guitar, but I felt like something should happen in the fuzz solo of that to give it some, just another character needed to appear to give it some interest and I went over and started tinkling on the piano and, and came up with a part. And, uh, and I really was, I was really waiting for a wave of emails going, you got to take that shit off. (laughs) (laughs) But, uh, everybody, everybody, uh, I, I, I got to like it and I think it gives it a, a, you know, like a sixties garage band quality to it, especially in the fuzz solo it being all the solo being all fuzzed out and stuff. Uh, but yeah, they, another one. That... 
I'm another sorry, one ahead. that has, I was just gonna say it's another one that just has this unique vibe to it, and uh, it made that one different. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and I was already in a, a NRBQ mentality with that guitar lick, and then playing the rim click, and you know, so that added that that Terry Allen, uh-huh. is that him? <laughs> you know, uh, sort of a tone. It kind of helped it shake a little bit, you know, yeah, and yeah, wobble. Yeah. Um, yeah. So that's what I loved about it. Sure. Okay. Well, that, that, when we when we're talking about like different elements, it seems like every song, if you wanted to go through, you could probably find one different element that doesn't doesn't quite. You can't really find it anywhere else. And when I yeah. think of about my speed, it's that slide lick that, you know, I think I got six or eight tracks, you know, uh, hunks as Brett called them. It's a great word for it. Hunks at one time. And I got th- that, 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 that slide lick. And I was like, okay, this is, this, this is breaking my heart. This is a song about every band that's ever existed in the history of man. Um, in which the f- first line was Bill had a tambourine on a tambourine stand, which of course is a stupid line. And we sent it to John Austin. I, I mean, it's, 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 it, I mean, stupid in the way that like uh, David Byrne, uh, it's always showtime here at the edge of the stage or yeah, bare naked ladies. I have a history of taking off my shirt. It's like, huh? You have a history right. of taking off your shirt. Um, <laughs> Bill had a tambourine on a tambourine stand. Well, where right. else would the fucking tambourine be? You know? So, um, so, I, so I'm cracking up. It's like, okay, well, here's a song. I'm laughing already, you know? Um, and that one became like more of a laugher all the way through, but there's just something, you know, uh, Tolstoy said something like, uh, all families uh, that are happy are happy in the same way. And every unhappy family is unhappy in a very specific way. That's a total paraphrase, yeah. but it's something like that. Hmm. Um, I think bands are, are different. Bands are unhappy in exactly the same way <laughs> problems in the band right. so repeat themselves in a, in, in, a, in a to a level of patheticness that it's like why are we even trying to do this again you know and have right. it you know have it crash and burn so that about my speed became a song about what i call every band in the history of the world yeah but it, that was all the slide well, thing that was go ahead well, for me, that's a, that's one of my favorite lines on the album. Um, sure, it's very specific, and if you're in a band, you get it. But if you're not in a band, you can at least imagine it. Or if you've lived, you've had a dysfunctional something. You know, something in your life is not you know that you've tried has produced equally as just ridiculous results. But uh, and yeah, that line just sort of sets up the silliness of it all. But uh, the line at the end with an O. Oh, do they ever pay for it? As a follow-up, I mean, it just, and then hearing John Austin's piano playing that yeah. beautiful repeating yeah. sort of hypnotic pattern yeah. underneath it. I mean, it, that just hit me in a way that was like, yeah. yep. yep, that's it right there. You know, cause <laughs> the song starts silly and then you sort of follow the story, but it's, it has its own kind of, you know, rhythm to it and its own uh, movement. Um, and then you get to that, that end and then you're sort of, just like being on the road strung out a little too long and you're just staring at that endless highway or, you know, endless list of uh, bills that you have to handle before you can get the car running again. And, uh, you know, to hear that piano part kind of pulling you into that <laughs> sort of ruminating stare you can get at that point. And then to hear that line, it was like, yeah, that's 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 a tune right there. That's a song. <laughs> Very apt emotionally for John Austin to be playing on that one somehow. Um, and <laughs> right. he, and his his poten- his piano line was just so it's it re- really reminded me of pavement. This there was something really delicate and slackery and yeah melodic and absolutely gorgeous. And you know yeah. we were so happy to have John play on this. Brilliant. Um, Brilliant. Uh, so yeah that that so. song is is what it's like to be in a band. 30 years in a nutshell (laughs) pretty much yeah you know and and i that's what i love about writing listening to what you write art and having been in and out of bands with you for 30 years is it's just it's endearing and shocking how accurate (laughs) (laughs) but it's also also universal and you know yeah. sure even yeah. if you haven't been in a band it's it's those 
uh, universal themes of right. going for something with other people. And over time, things happen that you don't expect, good and bad. And uh, But the bad stuff is always, you look back in retrospect, like, man, I, I should have just checked the oil. Why did I not think it was? <laughs> Why was I complaining job? about that? You know? <laughs> right, Why right. was I complaining about that? <laughs> Who's the oil? Just do it. Just somebody yep. check. Just I'll do it. You know. Um, right. Right. Anyway, yeah. So anyway, I'm glad you guys. Yeah, it's that was that was a fun one, a special one. But um, the one that that probably um is the most uh, 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 for me, and I'll admit it at the, at the outset is uh, as far as the song goes is what the hell is that? <laughs> you, you, know, you know what it is. Um, <laughs> Uh, we all have the one where kind of, uh, 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 um, is I have seen the light and I just want to, before uh, anybody else jumps in, I just want to say that these two guys were immediately like, this is the greatest song. We were having so much fun with this. I can't, <laughs> I can't believe we've knocked it out of the park with this one. And I'm just like, okay, all right. I have seen the light. Here we go. Let's go. You know? So why, why did, why any, either of you, why did, why did you like, uh, I have seen the light so much or maybe I misremember it. Whatever you think. I, well, for uh, me, it, it was sort of, uh, there's a goofy confidence in it. And by that, I mean, it's not silly, but that I'm, I'm, you know, there's some songs you like, and then s- some songs you kind of like, cause you think they're cheesy, but then you start liking them again. Like there's something in this tune that is, it could be a little corny when you're repeating that line. I can see the light, but then there's something about the rhythm and the aggression in the song that kind of says, Oh, if I'm laughing at this song, I'm, I'm missing something. So I'm sort of like listening to it more and then I'm getting something out of it. And sort of mm-hmm. depending on my mindset or depending on my mood, I'll, uh, yeah, I'll either feel the same eh, kind of feeling or I'll snap back in and be like, yeah, this is, this is, this is awesome. Like this is, <laughs> there's something here that's, I don't know. And the way perhaps you listen to fog hat or some, fans where you're like oh this is played or this is this riffs you know overdone or this is corny but then other times you just kind of get drawn into it <laughs> right on brett uh, i like the guitars right right <laughs> <laughs> is there anything else uh, in this <laughs> no i thought it, I, it did i was never lukewarm i never was lukewarm about it i i uh it was one for me that was my memory of it anyway, and it's been a, it's been a minute, um, was I cut, I cut rhythm kind of throughout, and then I went and played the solos. And then I tried to cut them together, I, something like that. And then I wound up just playing the whole other part, the, the rhythm solo track. And most of that is a performance. I might have punched a couple of things here or there, and and at first I I had it was one of those things. It's the downside of working alone. As I walked away from it and was just like, I can't listen to this anymore. Um. Uh, but then over, over time, I was like, Holy shit, no, this is. And I'll, I'll I went, I'll recut the leads. I, I I'll do that at some later date. I'll recut them, but this is good enough for now. And I moved on to either other songs or something else in the track and. Um, and, and it, and then it was, took, it took several weeks, but I, I was like, no, this is the shit. I, I don't need to change any of this. This works. It has a live feel to it. Everybody's performance is very, very live lyrically. Dude, I felt like it was, and it's funny. I just pulled out on vinyl, um, the REM document album. Mm. Uh, and it, it reminded me of like, it just like a song like work song where you know they it was more the overall thing was a statement it wasn't like the lyric was a a giant social statement or giant philosophical statement um but it it just was it was a moment in time and and they were following their muse when they when they cut that one and and it somebody fought for it and said it needs to be on the record that's that's the way that song kind of uh hit me yeah i i think probably what disturbed me most was kind of looking i i the the first lines are they destroyed my city they tore this place apart the flower of my springtime the paris of my heart 
and I'm, I'm like lying in bed. And that's the first thing I think when I wake up and I'm like looking past my feet and it's just so bald about what it is and what it's about. And yeah. um, whereas, you know, it's so much easier to be Michael Stipe and to hide, you know. Uh, um, right. So in, in that, and I, I think of Masters of War by Bob Dylan, where, you know, anytime it sort of yeah. comes up, you can see Dylan kind of cringe and be like, you know, you know, yeah, I wrote it. And yeah, that's how I felt at the moment. And, you know, that kind of thing. And entirely valid, entirely great song, you know, um, that we all love on some level. So. I think that probably that's probably my my jitters more than anything about it was just like okay this is you know which we probably actually just said something you just you just said it you know and yeah and, it, it 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 it's the beginning of the painting of the picture of the three or so minutes of the song I, I and it doesn't have to be that that kind of Michael Stipe David Byrne wordplay it doesn't have you know it doesn't have to be a Towns Van Zandt song. <laughs> it doesn't right. have to make. Yeah, it doesn't I, that's have what I, to make that sense. And that's what I mean by I mean goofy confidence isn't the right thing. It's more like a, a abstract confidence because that's what I yeah. like about it. I don't really know what you're meaning by that, and so there's moments where I sort of drift away from the lyrics and I am drawn into the guitars and the the aggression. But then I hear and I'm watching you, and it's like you know it's sort of like it's a little jarring sometimes when I listen to it. I sort of catch myself like. I gotta pay attention. Like something's something's happening here, um, but that's what I like about it. You know, get off my lawn, right? <laughs> and Captain or I Kane gotta listen. I gotta listen again. Right. Yeah. Right. 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 Um. So let's see. We talked about. Uh, and then I, I have seen the light has a spaceship sound, which separates it for me. There's a spa like coming in in verse three. There's I always do this with my hand. Oh yeah, <laughs> like like the night flight logo. Here, welcome to night flight. Right. That's that's how that thing's yeah. flying. You know, um, um, what what do we got going on there, Brett? That's Brett there. It's a it's a pedal that I got and and I just I got it for another gig and one day was messing around and and just thought oh I'll 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 see what I can do because I think it's in. Uh, world is enough hmm. is that right yeah it's in the pre-courses of world is enough that same pedal but a different part a different sound um but it's the same pedal and it was just it was just where can i stick this and what what works well and i really i i really only kept what i really 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 liked and right. tried to just make it work in the track but it's this pedal called a a red particle or the red panda particle pedal and it's it's kind of a bit crusher delay right okay good to know then there are there are cats who want to know that so that's good um For the nerds out there <laughs> um what there was one more thing i was going to say about that oh kevin's in my favorite that, that we both reacted to really strongly was something brett did um play the hits um, I heard it and I fell in love with the one part and play the hits. And then Kevin wrote in the email, oh my gosh, this part. And it's not obvious either. It's the last pre-chorus, uh, grab, crack your knuckles, clean the slate, take the gig, but the money is never that great. And as that's happening, Mr. Hartley just pushed the acoustic up as we move through the pre-chorus. Oh. And, yeah. and by the end, it has this sort of Boston, Boston celestial, you know, and that again, like, coming from the trio it could just stay the trio it could just be green day no problem but then all of a sudden this thing starts coming up and you feel that like a celestial element of the of the ac acoustic come come through so yeah just, and again I, it's not on every track you know it's it just sort of sneaks up on their third or fourth list and like oh that's what that is you know right i i just doubled what i'm doing on electric with an acoustic there's no acoustic in that track other than that mm -hmm. uh and it's just that little it's just that little arpeggio on that verse. And I, I pulled the 12, it's the joy of working at home is I need the 12 string. <laughs> yeah. And yeah. And then, thank you. The 12 string element was probably actually what I'm reacting to quite a bit too. So I didn't know that. Yeah. So see, this is why we do these things. I, I, I know exactly. Um, uh, album name, anything, anything else about the music? This is your one chance to say what you need to say. Any song, any idea? 
I really like stole the car. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, each, again, each one, you know, <laughs> of any concern I had in the beginning was that every song would sound the same because I'm using the same kit in the same studio and it's just the three of us. But, uh, you know, there's a, there's a mood in each one and there's a, uh, even in your voice on still a car, I love it's a little like, it almost hits into like a dead milkman kind of, you know, just, just telling the story. Like, I don't care what I sound like saying it. I got to let this story out. And that's, that's a cool one that sort of reflects that, uh, that kind of, um, you know, care in the story. Yeah. More than the, 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 you know, the perfection of the rhythm or anything like that. And that's, uh, makes a song like that just kind of fun and, and, and a little off kilter, you know, just the right. Yeah. Amount. It's, it's, it's a very schoolyard approach. We have a song, I don't know the name yeah. of the artist, but we, but we know, we know, um, uh, I've got a brand new pair of roller skates. Go and listen to that song again from a hundred years ago. Uh, okay. It's this girl. It's a sort of you know snotty sounding girl who's clearly out in the on, <laughs> in the parking lot or on the sidewalk. And you know, yeah. And I, it was the same kind of you know, a guy outside yeah. in, talking in a parking lot and telling the story about his friend, uh, right. you know, maybe, <laughs> who 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 you know, and just kind of and and taking that dead milkman approach and that sort of very. Uh, I don't know. It's it's kind of adolescent or something. It was really it was a lot. Yeah, of fun yeah, see. absolutely. Yeah, a song like that's got to be adolescent too. So it's a perfect right. report. <laughs> yeah. So and, and and I just felt like you know Brett and I went around about it a little bit. I just felt like it was uh, it was verse after verse after verse after verse after verse. It felt like it, the verse it felt a little longer, and I felt like because of that right there, if you push it later in the record, it, it means you've already got them, and they're they're going to have yeah. more patience with it. And I I didn't want people to think. That they're, that it was going to be, you know, desolation row after desolation row after, you know, <laughs> right, 16 right, minutes right. of verses. You know what I mean? So I, right. I, I there's to... little, there's, there's little things in every verse to make it. Um, yeah, it's a fun little story. You're wondering what to the make it a little, little bit next. different. Yeah. yeah. Good, and 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 enough variety, and at least I tried to do that in the guitar part, and and from V1 to V2, and then the vocals in V3. Uh, you know, and it was just having fun with it. Um, yeah, I, I remember the minute you sent that V3 and you went, oh, <laughs> and you all by yourself, it was like, what What do I do with that? And and something in my head was like, you fucking build that up with a bunch of you and Kevin's <laughs> yeah, right. Right. going, oh, <laughs> right, and right, it did right. it where I thought, I thought it was cool yeah. shit and, and hilarious and just and and set that verse apart from all the other verses yeah i yeah. i can't i couldn't seem to avoid like music of my youth as i was going around and i would come to big band small band jam band little river band again completely yeah. stupid doesn't make any sense there's no reason for anybody on the planet to ever say these series of words together <laughs> um, right that's and, what works yeah and that's what works but also, that's the, yeah go ahead Go ahead, it doesn't sound like you're forcing it, really. I mean, it just yeah. it kind of rolls off, you know. You're not trying to, you know, stick a uh, something in there because you need to get the name in there. It just what rolls off and doesn't need to make sense. <laughs> right. I mean, any poor soul who would like construct <laughs> a, 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 a verse like that too much, it's like just right. you know, it's it's so dumb. It's like, well, he's not trying to do it. You know, I can listen to him. Right. He's, you know, he's not trying to you know impress me with his thesaurus words or whatever. <laughs> Um, but yeah and then but it was funny because then i i would sing little river band and what would i have to do i'd be like what the who's i don't know what little river band sings i couldn't name one little river band song and now i have little river band in my album and so i went (laughs) to youtube and typed little river band and the first song is reminiscing yeah and became completely addicted to this song for a month it is (laughs) it is gorgeous 500 yeah. years from now, all art will be forgotten except this song by Little River Band. It is that good, yeah. you know? It's, um, it's smooth. And th- same thing with I Have Seen the Light, uh, Bachman Turner Overdrive. And Kevin actually mentioned, yeah. you know, do you want to mention Bachman Turner Overdrive? Like, I don't know. I guess I should YouTube and figure out what <laughs> what what their song is, you know? So I, I went and searched and they did uh, You Ain't Seen Nothing Yet yeah. with yeah. the baby. Um, and I was like, well, that's wonderful. So I love that song. So um, I, I even tried at, there was, there was a, a half a day where I was working on trying to work in, 
um, like Bachman Turner o- Overdrive, you ain't seen nothing yet. Um, <laughs> to to reference the song, but I but I was like, right. you know, you know, there are copyright issues and all that stuff. So I just yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. I just veered away and I found another line I liked anyway, so it wasn't a big deal. But um, it seemed like I could keep going to this well of AOR radio and um, uh, it's what we grew up on that seventies. 70s- yeah. 80s FM radio. Yeah. Yeah. And again, it's not contrived. It's just coming out of you, you know? <laughs> yeah. You yeah. in a bus and a van and all the years and listening to records and going to radio stations. This is the output of all those years. <laughs> right. Here it is. Exactly. You've come a long way, baby. That's right. Um, album name Branches Breaking from the Weight. Anybody have any thoughts? Remember where that came from? It's from the first track, right? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, but didn't we come up with the name of the album and then you worked it into the last verse of uh, oh, of uh, The World Is Enough, yeah. as I recall. Yeah. And I don't... Go ahead. I don't remember how the hell we came up with it. Um, I, 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 I'm pretty sure I thought of it at some point and passed it, you know, and passed it on. Um, we were The other names that I can remember for sure that we were considering were Art Edwards 3. Oh, <laughs> there yeah. Three of us. That's right. the third album. Menage right. a trois. <laughs> <laughs> that, that had been a good name that would have been a good name um see now it's too late it's already printed yeah, I, was, I wasn't copying um, on that email <laughs> and then the I other one on that email. The, the name that i really wanted and i was like i hope they like this one arthur edwards overdrive and you guys were like yeah i remember that one that was uh <laughs> that was a name <laughs> well there's a band in atlanta from the 80s or 90s i don't do you remember kathleen turner overdrive I, oh right yeah yeah right on yeah i remember them in star bar right so, uh, yeah they, they played the star bar all the time uh so i was that that's what steered me away from that in all in all yeah. honesty art it wasn't that it wasn't a great name it is uh but um that was kind of happening here not that not that anybody from here is paying <laughs> right <laughs> any attention right we all you, well, you kind of do remember do it but yeah, it, it, I can't remember when I first heard it, and I did. I admit I forget the part of adding into the song, but I love hearing that phrase in that song at that point of the album because it's yeah. a little frantic. And then I think back of you know what it's like to make a record over a pandemic for two years and the pieces that we did it, and it should have been hectic. Like we should have fought more. Like we should have. <laughs> there should have been, but it really just it wasn't. So it's interesting branches break from the weight for me is more like uh just an awareness of like whoa that maybe maybe this is about to fall apart any second like maybe this is you know maybe the weight of us trying to do this is uh um about to snap this thing and i'm just not aware of it (laughs) or haven't been on the email that uh (laughs) was stating it was all falling about to fall apart but that's what that's where it kind of hits me you know it's just a good unique one of a kind line um at least for me cool yeah that was uh that's definitely we had a, an ice storm in portland we've had all the bad weather on top of the pandemic oh, the right, yeah. weather ever and um during the ice storm uh, we have a big oak tree and so somehow some way ice freezes around the branches we've all seen this and then of course the sun comes out melting the branches so you have like uh, an yeah. avalanche and it's like uh, armageddon it, you know yeah. the, the sky is literally falling in chunks of ice on your <laughs> and so and the branches are snapping and, and falling all over right. so there's that and then something about uh where we are as a country maybe just you know that we've been so productive yeah. or so yeah. successful um you know that things are starting to give and we all recognize that too um well, I do like that it's unique, but it can mean multiple things at the same time. And, you know, obviously everyone can interpret it a little bit differently. Uh, but then hearing it in that track, you can think it adds to the urgency aspect of it. Cool. I, yeah. Go ahead, Brett. I'm looking at files and we started this in November of 2020 is what I'm, oh, wow. is what, is what my, so I don't, and, and I, and I, and I don't mean to be contrary, uh, but I we had started this a good ways into the pandemic. Uh, yeah. it, it, I, we didn't spend two years on this. Not not that that really matters, but uh, I just wanted to mention that. 
year? Uh, if you told me it was six, I believe you. I have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> it's, just, no idea it's just one baseball practice after another, you know? <laughs> right. yeah, exactly. <laughs> and I have to look. I don't remember either, but uh, I'm looking at demos and and uh, and stuff like, and you know files that we tracked down at your place, Kev, and yeah, me me taking clicks and stuff like that, and it's all uh, oh. Here's a click from January 1st, 2032. Yeah, that's going to happen on this so, old computer, I'm sure. So, but Many, many moons in the future. <laughs> May we still right. be making records then. In 2032, yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, um, I, I digress. No, no, no problem. Um, uh, so uh, we decided to uh, do, the, do the record uh, at Bandcamp and DistroKid. That pretty much means our record's for sale at Bandcamp, iTunes. Um, and you can listen to it at Spotify. And then there are about 800 other places that's for sale, you know, that I have, I don't know anything about. So if people have yeah. a favorite place that they go to a niche place, um, it might be there too. It's called branches breaking from the weight. You can actually hear what we've been talking about. Um, and we're going to, I'm going to, I'm going to be writing about it every song, one, one song a month for 10 months. So I can't stand the idea that you put a record out and two weeks later, it's like it didn't, didn't happen. So I pretty much just pretend that, you know, it's still happening all the time and we're Def Leppard and we get pushed for 10 months <laughs> with, with 10 different singles, you know? Yeah. So we, each month is a new single. The single this month is Stole a Car as a promise to Brett that I would at least start, <laughs> uh, start with Stole a Car, even though it wound up later on the record. Um, and when you're fighting over track nine, that's a good place to be. So that's what we were doing on that. Yeah, that was track order was hard. Yes. Track order was hard for this album because everything yeah. had 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 a sparkle to it. That yeah, it was just hard. It was hard. You can turn it up. But it works now. Yes, I, I was going to say. I I think I think um, I think it works now wonderfully, and I have no. It it just. The way it's and even and even seeing when the vinyl master came in, I mean, I, I saw it before, but thinking about vinyl when we started to talk about pressing vinyl, uh, seeing the sides like that, that did it for me as well. Uh, you did a good job of of mapping that kind of stuff out. Our, I, it, it really it it has a flow to it that it needed to have. Yeah. Yeah, I think. Uh... Um, that's the one part I get controlly about. That's the one part that I have a right. hard time letting go where I'll send you an email and you'll be like, how about number seven at number three? And I'm like, no, no, number seven, is number seven. <laughs> you know what I mean? We all have that gene. I don't know how you, right. I don't, I, I would imagine we all do, um, where we're just like, you know, yeah. um, and so, you know, and I, you know, I, but I fight it because I know, you know, there's, there's a, there's a, there's a smarter way to do this, you know, and you want other people's opinion and I desperately needed you know, all of your opinions all the way through. Um, but, you know, the, I, I admit, even in the refreshments, I was the same way. It was exactly the same thing. I was just like, I would make it and be like, here it is. Here's the, you know, um, not that I had, not that I did it at all. I'm not taking credit for all of it, but I, I was anal as heck about it. So um, thanks for tolerating the. Uh... <laughs> no, it's, I'm, I mean, I'm glad I didn't have as strong, but knowing you did, I was like, let me step back. I want to, I want to watch this happen. And sure yeah. enough, it, you know, I wouldn't have picked it better than this, you know, and I wouldn't have enjoyed it either. I kind of enjoyed the taking a step back a little bit, and uh, and then listening to it in that sequence was like, yeah, it's now I, you know, I have to listen to it that way. <laughs> That's right. That's it. Everybody can. I have you, to. You can just switch right. it around if you want. But I mean, how how yeah, much how can't. what what little it matters even at this point and still i can't like oh no it's got to be the right sequence right, it's gotta right. Be, you well know. you don't shuffle you know dark side of the moon you can't shuffle this either so right amen <laughs> well put well put i like that um you can't shuffle it um wouldn't it be great if you could build that into the track somehow and people try to shuffle never mind um <laughs> right. one track <laughs> That's one right. boom 35 minute track yeah <laughs> Um, yeah, that was kind of a battle. I thought for sure we were going to make it to, you know, I don't know if it's something male in me or what, but I keep like wanting to make a longer record. You know what I mean? I keep like, you know, it's like, but every record is like 35 minutes and 37 seconds. And, and you know, it's like, it's like the, 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 the axe falls. 14 songs in 15 minutes. 14 songs yeah. in 15 minutes. 
we uh, we've made that record, haven't we, Brad? On our, <laughs> on our, on our eight track ping pong in it since 1989. <laughs> <laughs> well, cool. All right, we're we're at an hour and four minutes. Um, so I'm gonna I'm gonna call it here. But I want it's a really important question. Um, three possibilities. One. We got an invitation to play in Austin, Texas in October. Two, this is two apparently, I don't know why. Two, <laughs> um, we, we, I can come to Atlanta and we can play there. Or three, we can go to Tempe in, in February, March of next year and play. All of these will cost us a shitload of money and we will not make <laughs> any. So keep that in mind. But if we got together to play a gig, where would you like to play ideally? What's in Austin? Uh, a, a, a show. Uh, uh, a guy who did a podcast. His name's Brent, and they and they do a uh, Brent and Raynell, oh. and, they, and they do a, a podcast called Sound Pollution. And they live in Texas, and they're setting it up for late October. A festival, or yeah, it's uh, yeah. They, they've got a, they've got a few they've got a few nights booked at at a, at a couple gotcha. of clubs. Gotcha, there's one gotcha. there's one acoustic night, and then there's a Friday Saturday all band thing. But uh, are we off the air or like, uh... <laughs> right. Are, have we signed off yet? Or are we just talking? That's well, right. and I know you're still recording, but you're not going to use this in the podcast, right? I, if, if you don't want me to, I won't <laughs> use that part right there. Uh, <laughs> make it interesting. I love the idea of Tempe. I, you know, yeah, I played Atlanta, I played I, Austin. I don't know if I played Tempe, I played Tucson. And uh, I think your fans was, are in Tempe. Right. We could actually play for a hundred people. Yeah. I, just love, I love the idea of playing places I've never played. I mean, once, if you get us a gig in, in, in North Dakota or Alaska, I'm there. Those are the only two <laughs> States I haven't hit yet. But, uh, you did Hawaii. Yeah. No, but I did visit Hawaii on vacation. Okay. So that, uh, I played but a ukulele in the store there. Yeah. Right. There you go. So, so, done. So, it's and somebody threw somebody threw a I'll, nickel at me to stop. So yeah, I, exactly. I, I got paid in Hawaii. I'll, I'll, I played an instrument in Hawaii. I'll take a gig there, but uh, North Dakota have I have nothing. No gift shops. I you know I don't think I've hit the. Uh, I don't think I even passed through the airport in North Dakota. I played South Dakota, but okay, not North. Oh, cool. All I, right. I I think your people are in Tempe. Okay. Yeah. And and I think that's that's probably the wise move. Okay. I'm holding you to it. <laughs>